afternoon. I'm Barbara Era, and I'm the co-chair of the WAPA Candidate Forum. And I'm the vice president of the League of Women Voters of Palm Beach County. WAPA stands for the Women's Awareness, a Women's Alliance for Political Awareness. And it's made up of a number of organizations, nonprofit and nonpartisan women's organizations in the county. In addition to the League of Women Voters, we have the National Council of Jewish Women and uh, the other co-chair of, um, of this candidate forum, Linda Yeller Schwartz. Apart from that, we have our, our other WAPA sponsors who are now the YWCA, Planned Parenthood, the National Council for 100 Black Women, the Executive Women of the Palm Beaches, the Women's Chamber of Commerce of Palm Beach County, and the Junior League of the Palm Beaches. We all came together with a common purpose. First, we urge all of you to vote in the 2012 elections. But that's not all. This is not only about picking a president. The WAPA organizations wanted to inform you about what is, is on the ballot this year so that you can be an informed voter. That's why we invited all the state and local candidates uh, in contested races of Palm Beach County, that is, for state legislature, county commission, as well as state attorney, so that you have a chance to meet them and hear what they have to say. You should have all received a program on your way in, and there you'll see a list of the candidates who, have, who are present in this forum. There were a few candidates who had conflicts and could not be here today. We want to thank all those candidates who accepted our invitation. On the ballot as well, we have, you know, there'll be 11 amendments and a list of Florida judges and justices with a question before the voter regarding merit retention. All around the back walls of, of this uh, room, we have display tables with the WAPA sponsors. I recommend that you take the time to visit those display tables. You'll not only find information about the services that these organizations provide the county, but you can pick up information on the amendments, for example. There is the, um, the League of Women Voters Voter Guide, and you'll learn about what each of the amendments are about. And we also have a publication on the judges and the merit retention process. We also have someone who will take a brief moment, who will be introduced in a moment, is on our program, and to explain to you what merit retention is. Again, the purpose here is we want you to have the information that you need when you go to vote. Um, we also, for more information on the candidates outside of this room, we have a candidate literature table. So please do stop by. Our main message to all of you today and the residents of Palm Beach County is that you should be prepared to vote all the way down the ballot. Additionally, if there is anyone here who has not registered to vote, needs to change their address, or update their signature, we can take care of that here. Um, the ballot, and all you have to do is visit our, our display table. The 2012 ballot is exceptionally long this year due to the number of amendments and candidates on the ballot. And you have several options. You can vote early, which is from October 27th to November 3rd. You can vote on election day, November 6th or you can vote by mail. Um, if you visit our, our display tables, you can actually fill out a, an absentee application and take care of that here. Finally, following uh, the forum, if you, would, if you want to have updated information or information on the services that each of our organizations provide, please sign our sign-in sheet, leave us your email address if you haven't already done that, and uh, we'll get you information uh, in, in the future. Also, be sure to let us know if you need any information on uh, regarding the elections. All right, on to our program.
It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you our moderator, Michelle Suskauer. Ms. Suskauer, Ms. Suskauer is a Florida board certified criminal trial lawyer, which is the highest recognition for competency and experience for a criminal trial lawyer. Ms. Suskauer is one of only six women who are certified in Palm Beach County with this specialty. She is also AV rated by uh, Martin H Martindale Hubble, which indicates that an attorney has reached the height of, um, of professional experience and is recognized with the highest skill and integrity. Ms. Suskauer began her legal career as an assistant public defender in West Palm Beach. She has been practicing in Palm Beach County since 1991, specializing in criminal law in both state and federal courts. She joined the Suscarol Law Firm in 1997, which has handled thousands of criminal cases. Ms. Suscarol is also a nationally recognized legal analyst who regularly appears on CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, NBC, and CNBC. Please join me in welcoming Michelle Suscarol. So I want to go over with you the order of today's forum. We're going to begin with all candidates for the Florida Senate, and after their questioning is complete, we're going to move to questions for the Florida House. The third group of candidates will be for county commission, and we will end with the Palm Beach County State Attorney's race. And here are the ground rules. Each candidate will have one minute opening statement, and he or she will be allowed only one minute to answer the questions. And we will end with a one minute closing statement. Prior to taking the stage, the candidates drew numbers and the first question will go to the candidate who drew the highest number. The other candidates will then have the opportunity to answer the same question if they wish to and have one minute to respond. The next question will go to the candidate to the left and so on until all the questions are asked. Because of time constraints, there will be no questions from the audience. These are questions that we have a broad range of questions in all different areas that have been carefully formulated and so we won't have time for those questions. Finally, we have some very aggressive timekeepers. Can you please stand up? They're, they're brutes, okay? And they will not be shy about time limits. Um, now, at first, what I'd first like to do before we begin with our Senate candidates is I'd like to introduce Mariano Garcia. Mariano is a partner with Circe, Denny, Scarola, Barnhart, and Shipley. He has so many, so many uh, titles in his name, we don't have enough time in the next three hours, but he is uh, the immediate past president of the Legal Aid Society of Palm Beach County, the past pre president of the Hispanic Bar Association, and he is going to speak briefly on merit retention. So give it up for Mariana Garcia. I'm here to talk to you about something that I think many of our voters are not aware about. So give me a show of hands and let me know who knows what merit retention is. Well, I'm impressed. <laughs> so I hope to give you in the next couple of minutes information that you can pass along to your family and friends so that they can be better educated on this issue. And it's kind of interesting that I'm going first because the issue of merit retention will probably appear at the very end of the ballot. And uh, it, that, it's unfortunate because it's probably one of the most important statewide issues that we're facing. So in Florida, we don't elect <coughs> judges in our courts of appeal or in our Florida Supreme Court. And our Florida Supreme Court consists of seven justices, okay? Those seven justices are appointed. They go through a very lengthy application process, interview process by a nominating commission, and from that group of applicants, usually six, three, no more than six are selected and then sent up to the governor where they are interviewed by the governor's staff, and then the governor uh, himself or herself, and then the governor makes the appointment, all right? 
And then that justice serves until they age out. But every six years, their names come before you to determine whether they deserve to remain in that position. And so this year, three justices will appear on the ballot. Okay? Two of them happen to be the only two women who serve on the Florida Supreme Court. And they are Justice Barbara Pariente, who hails from Palm Beach County. You should all be familiar with Barbara Pariente. The next is Justice Peggy Quince, who is the first African-American woman who has the distinction of serving on Florida Supreme Court. And the other is Justice Fred Lewis, who is from Miami and has also served on the Florida Supreme Court along with Barbara Pariente and Peggy Quince with distinction. Now, what should go into the decision of whether or not a justice deserves or has the merit to remain as your justice? Well, the question is simply whether they've done a good job, whether they've served faithfully, whether they've been arrested, God forbid. But what happens? This system has been in place for about 36 years. Before then, we used to elect justices. They ran for campaigns just like many of the honorable politicians who you'll hear from today did. Except that the concern was that because justices have to be fair and impartial, right, and this is a nonpartisan position, was that if they're elected, then we're introducing politics into a branch of government, the judicial branch of government, which is supposed to be completely apolitical. No politics can enter a judge's mindset when making a decision, right? So we, we've had this merit retention system now for over 35 years, and the concern is that now we have some uh, special interest groups, uh, political parties who are weighing in on this merit retention race, okay? And they're introducing politics into a process that should not be political. And so what I'm here to tell you is that your decision on whether or not a justice should be retained should be based upon the qualifications and merit of each of these individuals, whether they've done a good job, whether they've served in that position faithfully and honorably, whether they have been fair and impartial. When you leave here today, you will see a couple of handouts. One talks about each of the justices and appellate court judges who are up for merit retention so that you can read about them, learn about them, go to websites, and become aware of their qualifications. And the other one is a guide for Florida voters that was put out by the Florida Bar to educate you some more about this process. So the only thing I want you to take away from my brief presentation today is that politics has no place in our system of justice. The justices are there to be fair and impartial, not to kowtow to the ideology of political parties or special interest groups. That's the way our founding fathers wanted it to be. They designed a limited government where the judicial branch of government is there as a check and balance. You all remember that from civics class way back then? So when you go to the polls on November 6th, don't forget to vote on this merit retention issue. And before then, please let your friends know about this and make sure that they're aware that it's an important issue on the ballot. Thank you very much.